a warm welcome. The church buildings will be reopening for public worship on the 6th of September. St. James Church service will take place at 9.30 a.m. and St. Stephen's Church service will take place at 10.30 a.m. All these arrangements are subject to review as required. Even though we will meet in church buildings, we will continue our online worship services for all those, um, for the benefit of all those who will not be able to attend the service in person and all those who have been joining us for online worship during this time. We upload our services on our YouTube channel. Please do subscribe, like or share um, the links that we post on, the services that we post on our YouTube channel. You are welcome to join us for events that take place via Zoom, coffee and chat that takes place on Sunday after the service, half 11. Devotional Dippers with Vicar on Thursday, 1.30. Uh, it's a Bible study and quiz evening on Friday, 7 o'clock. This is just to acknowledge that we use the material and um, the songs with permission. So we hear a song, a
Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome as you join me for our midweek morning prayer. You may watch this video later on uh, on our YouTube channel or on our uh, like on even on Facebook page. Uh, you are very welcome to. We uploaded um, the order of service on, on our Facebook page. Um, please do join us if you have been able to download it. If not, the words will appear on the screen. You can join that way. Uh, we also emailed it and uh, whichever way you feel comfortable, I hope you will be able to join us. Let's just be quiet for a few moments. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Prayer of Thanksgiving. You're welcome to join me. Blessed are you, Creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The opening prayer. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Behold a moment of silence. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. And we do a psalm. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 111, verses 1 to 10. Again, the words will appear on the screen. You are welcome to join me. We say the psalm. Alleluia! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is never, he is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. And we say glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And we come to our Bible reading and uh, today's Bible reading is from the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 19b to uh, verse 31. 19b means the second section of the verse. <laughs> so we hear the Bible reading. For several days, 
He was with the disciple in Damascus, that is Saul, Paul. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked this name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. After some time, after some time had passed, the Jews plotted to kill Saul. But their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night so that they might kill him. But his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples and they were all afraid of him. For they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord who had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up, living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. It increased in number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm just going to share a brief reflection. It's a reminder, This uh, the Bible reading from the book of Acts is a reminder for us that God's Holy Spirit can change anyone, even a persecutor like Saul, who later was called Paul, the Apostle. In our reading today, God used a scholarly person in Paul, counter his fellow Jewish scholars and religious leaders to justify Jesus' coming as the Son of God, the Messiah. However, we learn from the Bible that our worldly knowledge has to be sanctified by the power of the Holy Spirit. Saul was now speaking the language that God's Holy Spirit had taught him because he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus and this is after he had encountered. So he had that language, that power from the Holy Spirit that he was able to speak the language of God's Holy Spirit in the power of the Spirit. This could only come through the experience of encountering God in a personal life. We can all encounter God in a personal life, in any situation, in any time. And uh, it can be in a very silent voice or it can be something that Paul encountered. So there are different ways of knowing and encountering God. Saul, who was called Paul later on, was still not accepted by people in general. They were still scared of his cruelty that early believers of Jesus had experienced. Because initially he was the one who was persecutor, who was persecuting people, Christians and Christian believers. But a man of God in Barnabas is a true example 
about the importance of encouragement. He was encouraging to those who accept Jesus as their savior. He was the one who was encouraging. No, he is the one who, who have encountered God, who have encountered Jesus. He's a changed person now and we need to accept him. So as Christians, we always believe that in God, there is every possibility of healing and restoration of people from whatever background they might come from. We can, whatever background we have or any individual, God has power of healing and restoration. Once they, accepted Je once they accept Jesus and they are changed, we are changed. When we accept Jesus, we are changed. We change in Christ. We understand our thoughts and our behavior. Everything has impact and we re know the power of Jesus in us. The church must have heart and courage to receive people like that who come to Jesus. Sometimes we can be suspicious, but we need to have that heart, welcoming heart, accepting heart, the heart that accepts anybody from any background, and, and but if they encounter Jesus, they are a different person. Barnabas teaches us about God's grace in sustaining the converts into Christian faith from different backgrounds. Saul, with the support of Barnabas and other apostles, became bold preacher and for the church, a great commentator of the Bible and the teachings of Jesus because he had personal encounter and he was sharing those encounters in the power of this Holy Spirit, boldly preaching that he is the one who is saved by God's grace. May God continue to hold us as we continue our journey with him. Perhaps we don't know yet, but we have started the journey or we are already on the journey. Let's continue to ask God's spirit to empower us so we can be bold witness personally and wherever we live. Amen. Responsory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. We're going to have the gospel canticle. You're welcome to join me with the refrain or other words too. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us some mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the Prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. So we come to a time of prayers. So let us pray as we come before God and offer our prayers. We come before God and give offer our thanksgiving for all the blessings that God has showered upon us and continue to shower upon us for God's grace and mercy. And the most precious gift in our life is Son Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And we give thanks for the Holy Spirit that enables us, the disciples, the believers in the world, to be bold witness and proclaim the gospel. We give, give thanks for the creation, the beauty of the creation, the natural resources that God has blessed us with, our friends and family members, and any that we want to add into our thanksgiving list to God. We pause and give thanks to God. And we come before God and offer our prayers for our community. We give thanks for the community that we are a part of, our neighbors, local members, the shops, local businesses, local councils, let's give thanks for them. And we pray for any who need God's courage and peace at this time. People who may be suffering because they are lonely or unwell. Pray for the businesses that are struggling. And any situation locally known to us, we offer into God's hands. We also pray for the schools. I've got one school near to me. I could hear children playing. So let's just give thanks for our young children, our schools, our colleges, universities, and the head teachers, teachers, pray for the parents, for the safety of the children and schools, and all those will be in the environment of unknown. As they get settled, may God's peace be upon them. Pray for local schools in our area, for St. James, St. Stephen's and local colleges or universities as, and pray for young children, especially all those who are preparing to go to the university. We also pray for ourselves, pray for friends, the family members, for this day in our life, and all the tasks ahead of us. May God grant us hope. We pause. And uh, just before we conclude our prayers, 
Let's offer prayers for any who are suffering with coronavirus. Pray for doctors and nurses and the families who have lost their loved ones. Pray for the researchers who are doing research for the vaccine. May God's presence be in all the process. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect. Sorry, I've just <laughs> mixed up the papers. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness increase your grace within us that our thankfulness may grow through jesus christ our lord amen and we say the lord's prayer together whichever version or language you are familiar with please do join me as we say the lord's prayer I'm a father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So this is the conclusion, I'll just try if I have got the, the slide, I'm going to see, I think I have, there it is. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life, Amen. Let us bless the Lord, thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for our midweek, midweek morning prayer and whatever a day you have planned, however you have planned your day and whatever you're doing, may you know that and always smile because God is good all the time, all the time God is good and you can say that too. Have a really good day, may God's blessings be upon us all. Thank you very much. I hope to see you on Sunday for 10 o'clock our spiritual communion service. Take care.